Also, it's important to remember that the diversity is dynamic. Dynamic means it's constantly changing. It's constantly in motion. It's not going to stay the same. It's not stable, and there's a lot of change over time with this. Um, it could be very rich at one point with lots of numbers, or it could be very even at one point and then not very even the next. So there's going to be a lot of change with this. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so this kind of shows the distribution of animals. There's a lot of different kinds of animals. Um, well, not just animals, this is species overall. The big blue part takes up the majority of all species on the planet. The big blue part is arthropods. There are more arthropods than anything else on Earth. There's lots of insects, pretty much. Lots and lots of insects. And of those insects, there's mostly beetles. So if you want to discover a new something, um, you're most likely going to discover a new kind of beetle. That's tough. So, in fact, one of my professors was a very famous, fancy professor. He was a distinguished university <laughs> professor. He discovered a beetle and named it after himself. So if you're ever gonna discover something, go find a beetle. But all the blue on here is arthropods, but it shows the variety of other things that you can find. Now, the community structure can change, and as the community ages, as there are disturbances, maybe a flood, maybe a fire, um, it can just change with the season as well. Um, hot versus, you know, summer versus winter, that's going to cause the community to change. Each species can li only live in a specific habitat. You can't take a chinchilla that is made for cold habitats and stick it in the desert. Not going to work very well for the chinchilla. Just like you can't take Liz, who is made for a desert, and stick it up with the polar bears. Not going to do so well for Liz. Every animal has a specific habitat that it is made best to survive in. That is why they are adapted into certain ways. Each species can only live in its specific habitat. She's like, he didn't call shotgun, I wouldn't have wanted to go again. I was like, why? He's a farmer. She, 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 she said she never even agreed. You just forced it on her. No, I, just, I, just, I, just, I just said it. I just said it and walked away. Dude, you already have you already have Embra. Embra. Come on. I'm okay. I'm sorry. You got Embra. No, come on, man. Stop saying that. You said it yourself, like. Your words, not mine, man. Well, this guy told me not to say it. Yeah, the whole fam pulled up for three holes and left with the Applebee's. Without you? Yes. I mean, no, they got me. There's a relationship called symbiosis, and you've probably heard symbiosis before. Symbiosis is living together. This is when two species have a unique um, interaction that they are required to live together in some way. Now there are different kinds of symbiosis and the different kinds that we're gonna learn about are commensalism, mutualism, or parasitism. Um, each one is a little bit different and this kind of diagram kind of shows how that is. With mutualism, they both benefit. So one individual's happy, the other one is also happy. They both receive a benefit. What if neither are happy? Then it's not going to be some, um, symbiotic. They're not going to, if neither one is getting a benefit and neither one is happy, then there is no reason for them to be together. Is that like when the hippos have little birds on them? That would be a mutualistic. The hippo is getting a cleaned of insects and the, um, the well, the hippo's getting cleaned of insects and the bird's getting protection from the hippo. Yes. Yeah. So is it possible for I'm a going to get a water. mountain lion and Some a wolf wild. to have a son? Some wild stone, guys. Mountain lion and a wolf? Yeah. Different species. They're two different. They're two different. What about like a, a mountain lion and a tiger? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
They're both people. Mountain lion and a tiger. They are it. both cats, but also probably two different. Dang it. What about a mountain lion and a panther? They're like the same oh, animal. Yes. Mountain lion yeah, and a panther are. There's no such thing yeah, as a panther. There's the same thing. Like a black panther? They're the same thing. The black panther is actually a jaguar. The black jaguar. Black jaguar. I don't think so. Dang it. A mountain lion has many different names, and panther is one of them. It's also called cougar, it's also called cat mount. A cat mount? Cat mount. Cat mount. Cat mount. Cat mount. I've never heard of cat mount. Yeah, it's another no. name for mountain lion. It's stupid. Is that more like a northern thing? Yeah, big northern thing. Like Rowdy? Like you know what I'm saying? Like Canadian, eh? A lot of cat mounts. Okay, so this chart is in Google eight. Classroom, but it shows <laughs> the um, relationship between <laughs> symbiotic species. <laughs> Commensalism is when one of them gets a benefit and the other one doesn't care. Now this is important because you will see this on the test. You will see a picture of a symbiotic animal and you will need to know what kind of relationship they are sharing. Um, for instance, you might see a picture of a bee on a flower and you would need to know is it commensalism, mutualism, or um, parasitism. And a bee on the flower would be considered what? Um, bee on a flower would be... <laughs> mutualism. Yes. That's what I was going to say about... Bee on a flower would be mutualism because they are both a benefit. The bee is getting the pollen and the nectar, and the flower is getting pollinated. So they're both getting a benefit. Commensalism is where one is getting a benefit and the other is not getting anything. It's not being helped, it's not being harmed, nothing's going on. Um, Interspecific competition, that is when both are getting hurt and it's more of a competition than any kind of benefit. And then predation, um, parasitism, parasitoid is when one is getting a benefit and the other is getting harmed. So here's another kind of way to look at it, and here are some examples, because you will need to know examples. This is also in Google Classroom. Commensalism is one of them is getting a benefit, one of them doesn't care. For us, the human gut and bacteria. Although in this one, I don't think that's the best example because I think that's more mutualism. The bacteria is getting food and protection and we are getting the benefit of having our food broken down. A good example of commensalism would be um, barnacles on a whale. The whale doesn't care that a barnacle is on it, but the barnacle gets moved around the ocean on the whale. Um, mutualism, bacteria, and a termite that helps break down cellulose. And then predation, the lion eating a zebra, parasitism, tapeworm in an animal. The animal doesn't get any benefit from having a tapeworm. The tapeworm gets all the benefits. Is it easy to get rid of a tapeworm? Not really. Um, don't those like eat your insides? They don't really eat the they inside. Eat your food inside. They absorb the nutrients. Nice. Like the head kind of burrows into the intestines. And then they have a long digestive, like a long body, and then the nutrients like absorb into their body. Didn't people used so, to eat them back in the day to get skinny? Because the, 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 the nutrients get absorbed. Is it a literal war? Yes. yes. That's what the people do. Like oh, you can pull it out of your body and just crawl on the floor. It's like four pounds. No way. It takes a lot of the average. It's all about it. We do a whole section on worms. Tapeworms for sale. Where can you have a tapeworm? I bet you I can find a spot. Are they big enough for you to I think they're like South America. How big are they in South America? It depends. It is. Um, there are round worms and tapeworms. Tapeworms are flat worms. What about ringworms? Ringworms are actually a fungus, not a worm. That's on the hay cattle. Yeah. We can go find some. We can go find some. Like, they're like a foot long. Well, they're much longer than that. Right here. Right here. Right here. Tapeworms. Tapeworms. Are like, the, they're <laughs> actually not very thick, the, but they can get like uh, really long. That's what they look like, Trace. Oh. Oh, that's disgusting. And each segment carries eggs. <laughs> and the segments oh, break off so that they can, um, the eggs can hatch. Oh, I 
would not like that in my body. 32 foot tapeworm? Yeah. Each segment has. AJ, look. 32 foot tapeworm in this first segment. Yeah. 32. Okay. Alright, so here's an example of commensalism. The orchids are on the tree. The tree doesn't really care. So the tree is not helped, the tree is not harmed, it doesn't care. Here's an example of mutualism. Um, the bee and the flower is a great example. But also the alligator and the bird. The bird is getting protection, the alligator is getting its teeth cleaned. So um, both of them, and the bird of course is also getting food. So both of them are getting an advantage with each other. But couldn't the alligator just chop down? Wow, so that's you. Well, yeah, but it's getting its teeth cleaned, and uh, that only mm. you see it? So. What? <laughs> um, in some mutualisms, neither species can complete its life cycle without the other, so they need each other to survive. In this case, the um, yucca plant needs the moth. And the moth needs the yucca plant, and without each other, they can't survive. So that's how specific it sometimes gets. So the moth and the yucca plant, they need each other, and if you take away one, the other dies. So in some cases, it gets very, very specific. Um, in some mutualists, the main benefit is defense. In this case, we all know Finding Nemo, the anemone, um, protects the clownfish. And so that is the main benefit is the defense that the anemone provides it. Aren't they like the only fish that can live in an anemone? I don't know if they're the only fish, but they're one of the few fish. So it like doesn't That's shock crazy. them, right? They well, yeah, it doesn't sting them. They're related to the jellyfish, so they have sting tentacles. I've been stung by a jellyfish. It was rough. It doesn't feel good. Well, again, take zoology. And you'll learn that um, not only is it a stinger, it's actually a little thread. And the little thread goes into the skin. And that's one of the reasons it hurts so much. You have a little thread injected inside you. I jumped into one. I was in the beach and I jumped right on top of one. I didn't know it was there. Yeah. That's the only way you can do it. It was a Portuguese man. Oh, it's a Portuguese man. They are. All right, so here's another example of a, uh, a mutualism is a nitrogen fixing bacteria. So there's a lot of nitrogen in the air that we breathe, but the nitrogen in the air isn't very useful to us. So we need to find a way to make the nitrogen in the air useful. And um, the bacteria that is on the roots of these plants actually take the nitrogen in the air and turn it into something that is more useful. And that's why it's called nitrogen fixing. So they take the air nitrogen and turn it into a useful nitrogen that can be used. Um, so we can breathe in the nitrogen all we want, but it doesn't do us any good. And it doesn't do the plants any good either. But this bacteria, which is found in these little nodules on the plant, they do turn it into a useful type of nitrogen. And so without that bacteria, these plants would not be able to use the nitrogen um, at all, really. So it's another type of mutualism. Bacteria get protection, plants get nitrogen. That's not an exponential growth. We also have something called interspecific competition, and this is when two organisms that are similar are going to fight for the same thing. Remember, we had intraspecific, that was two of the same species, inter is two of different species. Intra is the same species, inter is different species. Intra, same, inter, different. So in this case, we see a hyena and a lion, both of which eat meat, and they're going to compete for the same food sources, but even though they're com competing for the same food sources, they are different species. So this is a type of relationship that is not beneficial to either one.
this, this, I like this, uh, logistic? this unit. What logistic? It's, it's, really it's more interesting than some of Because it's animals, you know, animals are cool. And you can pay attention to it without falling asleep. I, that's why I studied this. I like this one. It's it's You're not taking You don't have to take it over. No. Why? Because? Oh, I guess you want to take that. It's not going you to take it over. What? Are you going for farming? I do. I'm going to take that over. You don't have to take Zuel and Zuel credit. You can yeah, take it down. I'm taking down to the That's what I'm doing. It's the same class. It's just, yeah. It's well, it depends. You can take, there is a dual credit zoology that's a semester, mm -hmm. and then there's another zool, zoology that's a year. The zool, zoology that's um, a semester, I don't think it's, honestly, I don't think it's quite as fun. Because the zoology that's a year, we have more time to do more fun things. Like with the, the year long one, we did the insect collection. Um, we'll get into birds, like we're going to do bird calls. Um, we'll get into mammals a lot. More. Last week, were you getting mad at your class? We heard you counting when we were in Coach Bill's room. When you were like counting in the closet. You were in the closet or something? Like hide and seek. And you started like counting. Oh, no, we, we, what hour was it? Seven. Seventh hour. Seven hours. So, we just hear something, you were counting like 15 or something. Wait, what? what oh, no, I was counting money. I'm, I sell out of the closet oh. now. I sell snacks out of the closet. You sell out of the closet? Oh, oh. I sell Heisenberg. money out of the closet. I sell snacks out of the closet. So that's what I was doing. <laughs> No, I um I I was selling snacks to them, and I was counting back change. It has um, become knowledge that there are snacks in my closet now, and so students have started because I never got that snack cart going for NHS, and so now I just sell the snacks out of the closet. So you just buy snacks. Any hour? Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the snack you snacks. Snacks in your, any hour. What kind of snacks? What's <laughs> left over from, well, it's mostly, I've got a couple Pepsis left. I've got some Kool-Aid jammers. I've got some Slim Jims, and I've got Oh, some that's chips. probably what the Slim Jim look for. Yeah. Yeah. Some people don't think of All right. Um, so, ecological niche. You might hear the word niche before, but a niche is, um, it's different from an animal's habitat. An ecological niche is basically how the animal fits into its habitat. The habitat is the where the animal lives, and a niche is what the animal does. So that bottom, like, two lines kind of makes, it, it kind of sums it up. The habitat is the animal's home, and the niche is the animal's occupation, what it's doing within its habitat. So, um, oh, if you have a bird that lives in the tree, then its niche is what it is eating and how it is surviving within that habitat, what it's doing within that habitat. If you have multiple animals that are living within that same habitat, then they will oftentimes find different niches within that area. If they live in the exact same area, then there's going to be a lot more competition, and usually one will outcompete the other. Oftentimes, you're not going to have two species that can live in the same niche. It's just not possible a lot, and one of them will outcompete the other. There's just usually not enough resources for them to um, live in the same niche at the same time. So we have something called interference competition and exploitative competition. With interference competition, one species actively prevents another from accessing some resource. So. For, it's some way blocking the other from getting the resource. One species of scavenger will often chase away another from a carcass. It's blocking the other from getting what it needs. This is a way that it is competing and blocking it from getting what it needs. Exploitative competition is the two species reduce the amount of resources available to others by using that. So deers and blue jays are going to compete for acorns. 
They both want to eat the acorns. They're going to compete for that same thing, so they're exploiting the acorns in that area. Exploitative competition. Yes. Yeah, what is that, bro? I'm scratching. What is this? What is it? What's the one there you do? go. No. It was more what did I do? I scratched. Dang. <laughs> Hi, James. Hi. Hey, Bryce, it's your brother. Hey, James. Oh. Boom. Where did that go? 12 million yards. Yeah, dude. You can talk with me, right? What? You can stand there for like five minutes. He walked away. Yeah. He walked away with you some miles in our dog. He was like, ah. I'm going to mess up the phone. I'm going to throw this stool in. Aiden looks like uh Aiden looks like Eminem if he didn't grow up in a trailer park. <laughs> 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 you say grow up or throw up? Grow, grow up in a trailer park. Because he was either one there. is appropriate. He's Eminem out the hood. <laughs> Hi James. Eminem <laughs> <laughs> made it out yeah. the hood when he was like ten. Yeah. And Aiden looks like a well fed Justin Bieber. <laughs> Justin Bieber doesn't have blonde hair. <laughs> Yes, he does. Okay, so here are some interspecific competition. Again, intra, same species, inter, different species. Um, we've got some birds fighting over a carcass. We've got a um, plant here trying to compete for resources. And we've got a spider and eating a fly. Now, we also have something called competitive exclusion, which is a process where two species compete for a limiting resource. One drives the other to local extinction. Now, local extinction means it's extinct in the area. It's not extinct overall. So when we are trying to get the same thing, one of them is just going to do a better job than the other. And so it's going to compete in that area and just do a better job to get the resources over the other. Call you, Better competitor will yeah. drive the less competitive species to extinction. Last year, six one. Six one. Wow, you're a lot taller than Aiden. My shoes are Adam. Oh, so you got it. Ooh, ooh, uh, actually, Aiden's taller. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. Again, I'm not six one. That means you're like five like, ten. You're like two shoes. Mine are like. Yours are the same.
plant will have its roots spread out so that they're still getting nutrition, but they're getting it from different places within the soil. Resource partitioning. Same resources, different places. Carly's cards are wild. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, it's like the distance once she sits on the ground. Lots of people have cards. That's why I have a whole wall. I have a card. Yeah, I think there are some. Some people like, just are too full of themselves. Katie Malone, hers is wild as well. Is it from Crabill? It's the Crabill. Crabill photo. Her and Austin Anderson. No, it's. They're the sponsor. No, but no, it's Crabill. It's Crabill. Yeah, Crabill. 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 Crabill.